sometimes there's a challenge so great beyond yourself that you need to take hold escape to the mountains to the landscape yeah in this film we are going to tackle a monstrous mountain with an awesome medium format camera on this amazing adventure where we camp at such low temperatures at such high altitude with film Block this morning. Georg and I are going to hike for about six to seven hours with about 12 to 14 kilos. Tripods, tents, sleeping bags, two bronicas, lenses, film, incredible amount of equipment just for landscape. We've still got about, I think, an hour and a half or, well, with our load it'll take us two hours, I guess. Uh, just to give you an idea how high we are. It looks like we're having beautiful weather for landscape photography. That sky is just amazing. Look at that. That's what you want. You want you want clouds, structure. Ah, it doesn't get any finer than that. A little bit of drama. So let's turn around and show you what this hot day looks like. I'm going to have a very famous dish that's served up here in this part of the world of Styria. That is Steierkass knuckle. It's a kind of a grey cheese. Uh, had a last time on bread when I'm on another hike. So I'm waiting for that. And yeah, this is the menu of what's what's so you got frittat and soup. This is like pancake soup. Uh Kaspress canoodle soup. This is a cheese dumpling. A Leibach noodle soup. This is a liver dumpling. Schnitzel mit Erdapfel und Salat. Yeah, this is easy enough to understand. Uh, goulash noodle. Yeah, okay. Spaghetti and fleisch sauce. Spaghetti bolognese. Steirische Kast noodle mit Salat. That's what I'm gonna have. Oh, this is the Kaspress noodle soup. Little, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this gives you like energy, gives you craft. <laughs> of course it does. And this is where things get serious. You can see the amount of meters, the amount of hours all these hikes take. Yeah. So, here and I are en route up to this beautiful area of Kleffekessel. So here we are, off we go, 2,311 meters, and we want to go to the top of the mountain, 2,618 meters, we want to go to the bigger mountain, 2,702 meters, three hours from here, oh that's a challenge. Uh, it is just incredible up here. Absolutely incredible. We just turn it around. Look at that. Sound of the wind, the water down below.
camp uh, because of the so much snow up here we didn't realize uh, it wasn't so easy and hopefully we found a place now to set up our tents it's absolutely beautiful here as you can see so Georg is setting up his tent new tent, new tent. there's poles everywhere there's pegs in the air So we discovered that the gas canister we're using isn't really compatible with the burner. And we, it's kind of a, both of us didn't test it out. It's done, it's done, it's done, it's done. Yeah, it's perfect. That's how we turn it off. We just take the pressure off the rock. We already cooked the noodles. They're done. They're really hot, they're really hot. So we're not, we thought it was going to be no hot food. Uh, so. This is about surviving in the wild, I guess. <laughs> Georg, are you happy? I am quite happy. <laughs> oh my god. I was like devastated. It was like, my god, we have no food. No. Yeah, we what? Have, well, what do we, we still have nuts. We still have nuts. Yeah, instant noodle. What the hell's here? Oh my fancy. Ch right chicken, chicken curry. Yeah, that, it really gets bad. And muesli with raisins. Okay. And that's the emergency bag of of nuts and uh, yeah, we'll be fine. <laughs> That's gonna cook pretty fast. The other one cooked like about four minutes. time primitive but effective <laughs> it is moody this morning but the sun will come over there you reckon yeah it's now seven yeah. I'll need to anyway let's get I'll get up and have a look around Ready. Oh, this is what we're looking at. 
at this morning. Not a bit of sunshine. And it'd be nice to get a little bit of break in the clouds. Get a little bit of light going on. Uh, What are you shooting with? Oh, the 210 millimeter and black and white. Which one did you choose? The Ilford? Ah, nice. Oh, the FP4. See the mist coming in here? Super quick. Unbelievable. This was visible seconds ago. And now it's coming up slowly into my scene here. Ah, I might lose those peaks in my scene. But I'm gonna go for this. So you can see my scene right here is completely covered in mist. And this was literally in seconds. I had the camera here in front of me set up just to get a little bit of mist coming over the little ice lake down there. Ah, but as you can see, this is coming. That's what's behind me. But I would say in a couple of minutes, this is all gonna be covered in mist, which is gonna be interesting because that's gonna bring some drama into all the other stuff that we've been photographing earlier. I use these rocks here, these piles of rocks. There's two kind of like puddles of rocks, so to speak, uh, as a lead into the peak here. trip a great adventure yesterday of course we had blue skies and better light this morning we have mist and yeah a little bit of drama would be nice to have a little bit more light so we've changed over from color to black and white uh, to capture this mist and, and this drama that's going on uh, but that's the way it goes uh, when you go out landscape photography you know for shooting landscape <laughs> you never know what you find and uh, it you if you come back with a couple of couple of frames uh that's a good job you know uh wasn't too cold last night we, i was expecting it to be colder i guess it was about nine degrees ten degrees uh to wrap up pretty well um put this sleeping bag well and truly tight um hot on yeah but all in all, it's been incredible, incredible. So, I'm gonna do a few more shots with the Bronica here. The cable release, polarizer, and took the waist level viewfinder this time around. Um, yeah, just to reduce weight, um, because it's such a long hike up here, actually, that you want to reduce as much weight as possible. Um, every 100 gram really matters. So, I think I started with a bag with about 12, 13 kilos and worked it way down to about 10 kilos, which was quite impressive, which meant that I could only bring one lens and one back. So kind of going to make sure that I finish a roll if I want to switch over to another, if I want to switch over to, from color to black and white. Uh, Georg, on the other hand, he brought two lenses. He brought his 210 and his 50 
No, 40 millimeter. I brought my 50. So we could swap lenses, which was pretty good. Ah, just seen a nice scene here. So I'm gonna have a crack at that. Looks really, really nice with the, the peak is now being covered on one side of it with mist. So I'm going to run over here and capture that. Uh, it looks very, very nice. See Georg there in the distance. Uh, we're waiting for the mist to go off the peak here. A couple more lakes, a bit of reflection. Let's see what we get. Just absolutely beautiful. Very moody this morning. Very moody. See the colour of the water. Like turquoise. I've been up here about three times. It's the first time that there's been so much snow still left. Uh, we're in the beginning of July. Usually the snow is gone. You can only really access this area uh, about two months in a year. Uh, you can go on a ski tour up here, but that's kind of hardcore. Uh, but as to walk up here and hike up here, we gear and cameras and, and tents and sleeping bags uh, you've only got a very short window of opportunity to actually make that happen uh, kind of missed out last year so I said this year that I would do it it's absolutely pristine quiet it's breathtaking. Georg and I had such a great adventure going to the Clefer Kessel with our medium format Bronica cameras. It was fantastic. It was worth the hike. The weather changed, but we were kind of prepared for this with our black and white film and color film switching over. It's really about going to those places that are special and less about the cameras we use and more about the glass and the film we use and the locations we go to. And that's what I really would like to say in the end, save your money for adventures. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you on the next one. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave some comments down below. Any questions? How do you feel about this format? How do you feel about landscape photography on film versus digital? Uh, yeah, I still struggle with this to be quite honest. I still have my GFX camera and I have the Bronica and both are really wonderful machines to use, are tools to use. Um, but at the end of the day, it's about getting out there into the landscape regardless of what camera you have. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and hope to see you on the next one. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell. Thank you for watching.